So who is Richard Williams? A Canadian animator who moved to London in the 50s, starting his own animation company with one purpose. What they call a masterpiece? When you, when you master a medium in the old days, if you were a master painter, then you did your masterpiece. The masterpiece in question would become The Thief and the Cobbler. To get the funds, William and his team would take on countless commercial work in a variety of styles, gaining hundreds of awards along the way. Dipping into a couple short films with Little Island and The Christmas Carol, with The Christmas Carol garnering Richard an Oscar. However, none of that mattered to Richard, whose one goal was to finance his passion project, which was about to become a lot more difficult. The original version of the movie was an adaptation of Nasreddin, an illustrated book by Idris Shah, which itself was based on Persian folklore, the story of Mullah Nasreddin, to be exact. A wise fool and his journey full of many moral lessons. The episodic nature of the film would make it harder to transfer into the movie. But the major problem would come in the form of legal issues. Idris Shah wanted half of the profits of the film. Moreover, his sister, who translated the book, was threatening to sue over ownership. Finances backed away from the project. Williams was scorned. Nasruddin no more. Nine years of work scrapped. The story was then reworked to be more close to what we got in the final movie. As the years would go by, there was a promise of funding coming from a prince of Saudi Arabia. Yet after the pilot broke its deadline twice and went twice over budget, the prince and his associates backed out. We're in the 80s now. Williams Studio is still working on commercial shorts. As their prominence kept growing, so did their opportunities with a monumental one on the way. The company was honing a technique to implant animation into live action with striking results, enough to get the attention of Steven Spielberg, who would approach Williams about working with a certain rabbit. But crying out loud, Roger! How the hell many times do we have to do this damn scene? Bro, I'll be in my trailer! A rabbit that would get Williams two more Oscars, bringing Disney back to prominence and bringing funding towards his dream project. After 30 years of work, hundreds of animators, and thousands of adverts, the film released in 1993 to mixed reviews and a poor box office. So how did this happen? Richard's team had about three years to develop the movie, but didn't hit the proposed deadline of spring 1992. The delays were coming from Dick's pursuit for perfection. Situations where he'd scrapped three months of painting for a scene because he didn't like the colors were a reality. Or if a scene would work out nicely, he'd just make it longer. That happened to many scenes in the film. It was constantly getting longer. Williams was also reported to have never completed the storyboards until late into the Warner production. Although these production issues would not be its nail in the coffin, that was about to come. Let me ask you a question. What other animated film was coming out in 1992. Ali, Ali Disney beat Williams to his own chase, with what some might say was a product that was a little too close to the thief. Warner didn't want to compete and backed out of the financing, leaving the Completion Bond Company to finish the film. With their first order of business, they fired the whole team, including Williams. Leaving Dick's version of the thief stuck in a permanent limbo 15 minutes of footage away from completion, forevermore. To finish their version of the movie, Bond would fill in the cracks with cheap Korean animation, then add songs, because this was a big budget 90s animated movie, right? They had to have songs. Then two years later, after the movie bombed, Miramax bought the business, then recut the film to include Aladdin rip-off jokes. Now let me ask you this, who owns Miramax? Disney. That's just a business, kid. You might as well quit now. Creativity is a terrible career path, I swear. This odyssey is a tale of artistic passion, of devotion, obsession, throttled by corporations, by people now known to be just as villainous, if not more, than the characters in the movie. Like a Greek tragedy where the creator is stabbed both ways. I found the story even more exhilarating, fascinating, and tragic than the movie itself. The documentary filmmaker Kevin Shrek. That's the dilemma. The story of making the film is more compelling than any narrative strand within it. This is the case on YouTube as well, with most videos on The Thief 
focusing on its backstory over the actual film. And yes, I know I'm just as guilty. I'm, shoot me. The paradox of its troubled development brought the film more dedication than it could have gained otherwise. On this channel, I've covered another animation that has a similar backstory, The King and the Mockingbird. Yet Mockingbird got its happy ending. The film was finished about 30 years after it was intended, with all the rights in the original places. This never happened for Cobbler. It didn't get to complete its hero's journey. What it did get was a collection of people who devoted themselves to painstakingly recreating the movie. The recobbled edition was an attempt to piece together the most complete version of the film, starting with only poor quality bootlegs of the director's cut. But as the project would grow and expand over years, there is now a HD version of the movie in its most complete state right on YouTube. That's not to mention the full documentary created by Kevin Shrek of the events chronicling the rise and fall of the thief, the persistence of vision. It talks to the animators on the project and uses a lot of archive footage from the different decades. If you'd like a wider picture of the whole event, you can rent the movie on Vimeo and I'll leave a link in the description. This isn't the first time I've seen this phenomenon, an unfinished narrative or unresolved plots in media. The injustice of its development speaks to the human struggle. It bothers people into action. Okay, okay, stop, 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 stop. We need to take a step back from this and talk about the actual film. After I bring up the death of the author, Buffed argues that the author has been inspired from the world of experiences, that everything comes from somewhere else. When we ourselves experience art, we create and define it by our own experience. The author dies, but the art will survive, to the point that the context of its creation no longer matters. So within that lens, does The Thief stand as the greatest animated film never made, on its own merits? I can't say it does, but let me explain. We're looking at the recobbled edition version 4. The Thief's issue is that it's between the commercial blockbuster and the art house. Landing in a weird middle ground, the story is just standard fare for a fairy tale romance, a simple hero's journey but without any strong substance. My tutor used to say that art without a message is just decoration. I wouldn't be that harsh towards the whole film. Aesthetic can be narrative, and the thief's visual flair in certain sequences is a jaw-dropping experience. <laughs> Although there are parts of the animation that become indulgent, the ending set pieces over the top to the point of parody. It's a roller coaster of chaos. The combined finale takes up 15 minutes of the runtime and could be half as long without losing anything of importance. Now, in the film's defense, if I was to remove the death of the author lens for a second, this sequence was a pitch for the cobbler, so they tried to make it as impressive as possible. But that's the problem. It's patchworked back into the final film. That is the movie in a nutshell, it's little pieces tied together. The first half of the movie is a great time, but the rest gets more fragmented and frayed as it goes. The desert sequence and the finale feel as if they're part of separate worlds. That being said, the backgrounds and colour palettes are fantastic, and shine brightest in the city, with its use of mosaic art and warm, vibrant colours glistening in the sun, giving the city an oasis in the desert quality. The characters. Tack has a classic Charlie Chaplin style, down to the black and white colour scheme. Both the Thief and Tack were intended to be silent characters, and they are in this version. They use Mickey Mousing in place of their dialogue. Although Yum Yum is plain, the father is barely conscious, with other characters being one note, except for Zigzag, who is an endless source of entertainment, teeming with character thanks to Vincent Price's performance. In this regard, I understand how Aladdin wins out. Aladdin has Aladdin, a charismatic thief with a heart of gold. Troubled but redeemable, fun to be around. As well animated and sweet as the cobbler is, his arc isn't complicated. He doesn't change more than an inch throughout. The level of character in Aladdin is one of its strengths, which begs the question in my mind, even if the thief was to come out in its finished form, produced independently in Europe, could it compete with Robin Williams or Disney at the peak of their renaissance? With the sheer advertising power behind that, 
Think ants versus a bug's life, but worse. Can we switch to the good stuff? Yes. <laughs> Williams has a more formalist point of view on art, art for art's sake. The technical achievement was part of the narrative for him. Make no mistake, Fief is an achievement. It might be the last time you will see some of these techniques in the 2D process. People working 8am to 11 at night for years to get it where it is. Yes, it deserves an official release, as unlikely as that is, although the film was archived by the BFI. Also, the rough cut was screened in 2014, which was enough to get Richard to put this all to bed, taking the monkey off his back. We could make an argument that at his core, Richard is a craftsman, and as a filmmaker, his skills were honed in the short format, and from a narrative perspective, that's where he works best. Which brings me to the prologue, his newest project, an independent short, showing off some of his most impressive skills that have only been sharpened with age. A visual spectacle impossible to pull off in live action. Richards isn't just one tragedy. His career was so much more. Richards is THE animator's animator, who archived the process and tricks of the golden age of animators into an animation bible, passing them on to the next generation. The book is even updated into an interactive app to pass it on to the even younger. He brought to life the best live action cartoon film ever made. Nothing has been on par since, and don't you dare bring up Space Jam. He won countless awards, including free Oscars and a BAFTA, and is one of the great masters of the medium. When it comes to the thief, we shouldn't grieve for what never was, but be happy for what we have. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like, subscribe, and I hear that you're supposed to click a bell now if you actually want to see my videos. And I also need to make this point right now. It was reported yesterday that Izao Takahata died. And I just want to say my condolences to his family, his friends, his animators. He was a wonderful creator. And I myself put down that very message in my video on him. If you'd like to learn more about his career and why he just didn't get enough respect when he was alive, I'll recommend you one of my videos about his whole entire career in the annotations below. But yes, I love you all, thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.